Sprinting through the 1980s, this is Sir Clive Sinclair. Inventor, entrepreneur, and the man who brought the world the first slimline pocket calculator, the first digital watch, the pocket TV, and of course, those ZX home computers. The 80 in 80, the 81 in 81, and in 82, the Spectrum. Since selling his computer business to Amstrad, Sir Clive has turned his attention to transportation. The A-Bike is his latest project, but the short-lived, low-riding electric trike, the C5, was definitely his most infamous. I met up with Sir Clive to talk about the golden age of home computing, but we also talked about his fascination with electric vehicles, and we've put that part of the chat on our website. Sir Clive, welcome to Click. Thank you. Thanks for having us to your place. What do you think of the vintage computer festivals and, and the people who still relish the 80s well, it, and it, the old it, machines? Well, it, it's, it's, it's exciting to me because, you know, and it brings it back, the, the excitement that there was at the time. I remember when, when the, you know, in the early days, there'd be a sort of exhibition and, and, and you'd have a, a, a stand and you could, nobody could get near the stand because everybody was so keen on, on, on the subject. It was a very exciting time. When I started in, 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 in computers, um, home computers existed, uh, and some pretty neat ones, but they, they were pretty expensive. In today's terms, they were over a thousand pounds. So what I wanted to do and did was to produce something that was, you know, five to ten times cheaper than anything that existed, and yet didn't sacrifice too much in, in terms of performance. So it was really taking something that was desirable, but making it economically possible for, 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 for everyone. Do you hark back to that day and think that maybe programming or computing was better when you well, had smaller, I do, less what power, I, smaller computers? What I, yeah, I, I, I think that, I do think, I miss the time when thousands, hundreds of thousands of, of, of individuals were, were programming. That's sort of rather gone. And I think that's a loss, uh, a sad loss. There was a huge sort of period at a, a time when everyone was programming. So, time. so what changed? Well, um, the arrival really of, of um, very memory-heavy operating systems, Microsoft, in particular, um, and, and IBM, and, 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 and it, it all became too cumbersome. So, do you think that took the took the ability to program out of individuals' hands? Then it, it made it pretty millions difficult. of lines of code made there instead of yes. hundreds of it lines. Made of it made it a bit difficult. Yes. Yeah. yeah, and now in we're in 2010 now, and we see the rise of the App Store, and we see the yes. rise of small programs again, and absolutely. possibly yep. the reemergence of the bedroom programmer. Yes, think? indeed, uh, it, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's entirely plausible that. Yeah. Now I know um, LJ in her vintage computing piece, which we've just seen. Um, I think she saw a ZX Spectrum that was connected to Twitter. They, they'd hacked the two together. Um, back in the 80s, did you look ahead and, and see the internet and the web as a logical progression? I'm absolutely ashamed to say I did not at all. Um, I, I mean, the internet... You and Bill Gates both. <laughs> the internet is the most unbelievable thing, and I did not foresee it. Um, you know, when we announced that we were interviewing you on our Twitter stream, that we had a huge response. Um, actually, several people have asked us to dispel a couple of myths. You don't carry a phone, true or false? True. You do I not carry a phone? No, I don't. Would you like to carry a phone? I often think about it, but I, I, I prefer not to, to be bothered by, by, by things. That's, you know, it's so, just distraction. So do you have other people to do that for you, or do you literally I've just want to be... I've got a landline, you know, so anyone that wants to phone me, they can phone me on the landline. It's not as if I'm not reachable. You just don't like to be contacted when you're out? No, I don't. No. You carry round a slide rule. I do, yes, that's quite true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Explain, please. Well, it, it, for many uh, um, purposes, a slide... Uh, it's not that I don't have an electronic calculator, of course I do, um, but, but um, a slide rule is, 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 is more useful for, for, for some purposes. Say, for example, you're, you're, you're travelling abroad. You can set the slide rule to the ratio of, your local, of the local currency to your national currency, say, and you, you just, uh, at a glance, you can, you can price anything. There is an app for that. The app would require you to enter something every time you wanted the result. Of course. Um, whereas the slide rule doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> Which of your inventions are you most fond of? Um, well, uh, the, 
the thing that made the, the most impact, and I suppose I'm most fond of, is it, were the home computers, the ZX80 and ZX81, the Spectrum, that, that series. The neatest, technically, really was the ZX81. I mean, um, the ZX80 ha had to be done on a very low budget, and so we had a lot of chips in it. The ZX81 was really neat because we only had four chips in the entire machine at a time when the, the world's best competitor had 42. So that was, a, that was a pretty astonishing. Uh, so Clive, thank you very much for your time. Thank you.